All right, welcome back to reading class, everyone. I hope you had a great break. Today, we're going to be discussing some authors techniques that they use in nonfiction. We've talked about a few of these before. One of them is anecdotes. Anecdotes are short personal stories that connect to the main idea. So an example of an anecdote could be if I was writing a nonfiction article about how bad fast food is for you, an anecdote would be um, a short story about myself, how one time I ate too much fast food and I wound up getting sick. So nonfiction authors like to use short personal stories um, to help demonstrate or exemplify the main idea of the topic. So click the raised hand button if you can answer this question for me. Why are anecdotes important for nonfiction writing? Yes, thank you, Sam. Exactly, thank you, Sam. So before we before we uh, get started with the rest of the lesson and read for today, we just gotta remember that anecdotes are important for nonfiction because it helps the author um, demonstrate their main idea. So today when we read, we're gonna be reading some anecdotes in the book. So when we do our exit ticket at the end of class, we are gonna wanna connect the anecdotes to the author's main idea. But first, before we get into that, can anyone here name all seven of these brands without looking it up? All right, I see a bunch of hands. Thank you, Mariah. All right, thank you, Mariah. So. The reason why you're able to remember all seven of these brands, even though you can't see the name of the brands, is because companies spend a lot of time and money investing in advertisements so that you can recognize these logos anywhere you go. So if you see the that bell, you know it's Taco Bell. If you see the Apple, you think iPhone. So this is called brand stickiness, and this is what we're going to be reading about today. Just to repeat, companies spend millions of dollars every year trying to get kids just like you to memorize all these brands and logos. Because that way, um, you, will, you will remember these brands, you'll be interested in these brands, and maybe you'll even purchase some of these products. Another thing before we get started, these are our vocab words for today. We have trailblazer, which you might have heard before. And that's a pioneer or an innovator, usually someone who does something for the first time. So if you take a look at this picture, you will see uh, Neil Armstrong and then the reflection of Buzz Aldrin in his helmet. Um, they were absolutely trailblazers. Can anybody give me an example of a trailblazer that you know, either from your personal life or from society? Just write it in the Zoom chat. Take 30 seconds, go. Awesome, yes, thank you, Michelle. Uh, Kamala Harris is absolutely a trailblazer being the first woman vice president and being the first black and South Asian vice president as well. All right, everyone, thank you for all your comments. Our second vocab word is manipulate. And we talked about this a little um, before break. And manipulate is when somebody tries to secretly and unfairly control somebody else. So it, this is a negative thing. It has a negative connotation. If you take a look at the picture on the right of the screen, you will see people who are 
being guided by a puppet master. So manipulate is a bad thing. We're going to be talking about manipulation and trailblazers in just a second. Great. So we've learned a little bit about Disney and McDonald's these past few weeks reading the book. Now, I want to know your thoughts about this question. So we're going to take a quick poll. Do Disney and McDonald's manipulate people in order to become rich? So that's our first um, possible answer. And so if you believe that, give me a one. Answer, answer choice two. Um, are Disney and McDonald's actually both trailblazers in making people very happy? So choice one is, are they manipulators, which is negative and they're doing something wrong? Two, are they trailblazers and actually just making people very happy? Or three, is it a combination of both? So based on what you already know about Disney and McDonald's practices, tell me what you think. One, two, or three, go. All right, now I'd like to call on somebody from each side of the argument. So we're gonna hear from Kai. Can you tell us why they're manipulators? Jacqueline, why they're trailblazers? And Michaela, why they're both? All right, Kai, you can go ahead. Thank you. So yeah, there are definitely arguments to be had for everyone. Um, Disney and McDonald's definitely manipulate kids into purchasing their toys, whether that or and and food for that matter. In the case of McDonald's, through their advertisements, through appealing to kids and what kids want, but at the same time, they are also trailblazers because they did a lot of thing, uh, they did a lot of new things for the first time. Disney uh, made Disney World and all these huge theme parks and also animated, animated um, films. Whereas McDonald's created an assembly line kitchen that could get good tasting food to a lot of people very quickly. So we're going to keep this argument going as we keep reading through the book. So just keep these um, vocab words and these arguments in mind as we start reading. But before we start reading for today, we're just going to go over our exit prompts. So that way you know what to look out for as we're reading. So I'm going to read this for the class. We'll talk about it and then we'll get started on the reading. Why is the story about Elias important to the overall structure of the chapter? Use two details from the text to support your response. So this story about Elias is an anecdote. So we need to find out how this anecdote about Elias connects to the author's overall argument and why the author uses this story about Elias. Like I said earlier, an anecdote is a technique that nonfiction authors use to demonstrate their main idea. And an anecdote is a short personal story. So we're gonna keep an eye out for this story about Elias and how it helps demonstrate the author's main idea. And if you take a look at the second sentence, you need to make sure that you use at least two details or quotes um, because you need to write a full paragraph response. All right, so this section heading is called brand stickiness. That's kind of what we were talking about at the beginning when we named all those brands. I would just like to ask the class now, why do companies collect information about children? Why would they need to do something like this? How does it benefit a company like Disney or McDonald's to learn more about children? How does that help their advertising? Who can tell me?
Awesome, thank you. So yes, these companies spend a lot of time learning about children so they know how to advertise to them the best. Now, sometimes companies will play an ad over and over, make you memorize songs like um, theme songs or jingles. Is this a form of brainwashing? Give me a thumbs up if you think yes, and a thumbs down if you think no, or maybe in the middle if you're not sure or think it's a combination of both. So thumbs up or thumbs down, let me see. All right, I'm seeing some thumbs up, um, some in the middle. So keep thinking about that as we keep reading. Now, here's our anecdote about Elias. So what does this story about Elias tell us about what food fast companies actually care about? Yeah, Jacqueline? That's right. This anecdote about Elias shows us how um, fast food companies don't care about children's health. They only care about money and making money. That's why all these McDonald's executives and fast food executives ignore Elias when he brings up the unhealthy aspects of Coca-Cola. So think about why the authors would use an example of Elias, this 12 year old kid being um, rejected and ignored by all these rich, powerful fast food executives. Why would the authors use this anecdote about Elias? So we're gonna write about that in our exit prompt. So please open up your document in Google Classroom and get started with your argument sentence. If you have any questions, let me know in the chat. I will be coming through your Google Classrooms to see how your work is going and see who needs any help. We've got the next 15 minutes of class to work on this. So get started. We should be able to get this done by the time class is over. And then for homework, you need to read pages 44 to 50 and then write three annotations for Wednesday in your weekly marginal notes page. All right, get started.